right, all right, all right. Welcome to the State of the Nation. My name is Henry Sully. Uh, before we start, allow me to recite the land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto African Alumni Association operates for thousands of years. It has been the traditional land of the Huron Wendant, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still home to many indigenous people from across the Tato Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. My name is Henry Sully. This is the state of the nation. Bino Biebifa Mugwanga. I think this is going to be one of the heaviest conversation I have engaged in. Uh, many of you have already seen uh, my preamble. If you haven't already, uh, you very well know if you're following the politics of Uganda that last week there was an assassination attempt on one of Uganda's most prominent generals, uh, General Katumba Wamala. That assassination attempt left his daughter dead and his driver dead. From some of the conversations I have had with several people, I have been informed that his driver Haruna Kayondo was looking after over 18 kids in his home. We do not know who is going to take care of those people now. We, we are also aware uh, that Brenda Nantongo was a recent returnee, Ugandan returnee from the USA. Uh, she had two degrees and she was working at the Bombo Military Hospital. She lost her life, her innocent life, under circumstances that are not known yet other than knowing uh, that her dad faced an assassination from unknown people we do not know much more about why that assassination was carried out and by whom uh, general katumba amala is not the only person that has faced this kind of assassination. There are many, several people have been killed before. Since the eighties, pretty much, uh, history shows us that uh, these assassinations have been happening. The unfortunate part is that we do not have any reports of the people that have been assassinated or murdered starting with Dr. Andrew Kaira, Aniata Kaira, Tetumumanyi. The government of Uganda has failed to address the who killed question. Who killed Dr. Andrew Kaira? Who killed Justice Joan Kagezi? Who killed Afande Felix Kawes? Who killed Afande Muhammad Chilumida? Who killed the Muslim clerics, the several Muslim clerics? Who is killing Ugandans? Anyatuta. Who attempted to kill General 
Edward Katumba Wamala. Who killed his driver? We haven't received any answers other than the two words. These are pigs from the president of Uganda? Who owns that farm? As you know, Ugandans can always be light. They try to put, to put light on each and every situation. Many Ugandans have turned the word pigs into people's in government security. Are the killers people's in government security? Who is going to answer these questions? Is the government still capable of protecting our lives and property? Who killed Jeno Katumba Amala's daughter? The government of Uganda has failed to address the who killed question. There are so many people that have, have died. And none has been reported. There's no murderer that has been reported over all these murders that have happened. Who killed Abiriga? Ani Atabana Uganda. Ani Atabana Uganda. These are tough questions. But these questions must be answered by our government. Kawesi was uh, an, uh, an AIGP, an Assistant Inspector General of Police. <laughs> an Assistant Inspector General of Police. He was assassinated just minutes away from his home. Should we keep quiet? Should we stop asking these questions? Is that the right thing to do? Is it poised for us to stay silent? Gualieyo, Ochido Oza coach. And yet, Dako, and yet, Dako, and what should we do? What should Ugandans do? Today, I have in studio my colleague, uh, Mr. George Willowbo, with whom we are going to be discussing this uh, conversation. And I'm gonna invite I'm going to invite him to the studio to introduce himself. George. Yes, sir. Welcome to the state of the nation. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Uh, quite tensed up. It's a, it's a very hot Sunday morning and uh, it's going to be like about 30 degrees today. It is going to be about 30 degrees. It is so, 30 degrees in Canada, and uh, but it's all it's also even above 35 in the political climate of Uganda, as you already know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Poster yeah. General. Yeah, it's uh, assassination. It's, ve it's very sad. It's very, very sad. And, yeah, before uh, start, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, I also want to go through a little bit, uh, a, a little bit of uh, uh, explaining on how we are going to uh, yeah. navigate this conversation. Sure. Uh, hi, viewers. Uh, my name is George Willobo. I am here with my colleague, and uh, I am here in the capacity of political analyzation 
but most importantly to be able to uh, understand the issues that are taking shape and making conversations back home in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure to have you. Uh, this is a tough conversation uh, that uh, many people were not even excited about uh, engaging in this conversation. Mm. Uh, most people are saying that we have been asking these questions for far too long. Should we continue asking these questions? Uh, mm. Are they going to yield any results? But before we, we, uh, we start this conversation uh, in a more detailed way, I have a message to some of my colleagues, uh, specifically the people, there's a notion that most people who support the National Unity Platform are also Baganda. Uh, I, I would like to assume that it is true. I don't know how true it is, uh, but there's also something that happened last Tuesday when uh, General Katumba Wamala was attempted, uh, first an attempted uh, assassination. Many people who are not, who do not subscribe to the NRM celebrated the killing of the murder, or the two murders that happened uh, because they directly uh, touched Mr. Katumba, many people were excited about it and they were almost celebrating it. Na ye muguganda echo chintu tetuchikola, chintu chichamu. Echo techili mundundu za muguganda. Mwachima nga chitufu ntida la majority of the people aba supporting the NUP are also waganda. Mpisa eyoku celebrating omuntu nga afude. Sia Uganda, sia dono ya Uganda. Muguganda, muliruwa na wafe, ni wawanga ya atuloga, nga tuchima inti ya atuloga. Buafiru wa tetulima. Buafiru wa tugeenda ni tumukungu bagi rako. Nadala mkasei rako, ako kukungu baga. Later on, nga waisa wetsera, you can always remind them, no, the mba gamba. Na ye, ujuki da chino, nechino, nechino, nechino. Tuwari tu waku gamba da. Ne muka seda akoku mooninga. We come together. We mourn together. We stand together with someone who is grieving. Even when we completely disagree with how they have been behaving or how they have been carrying themselves in society. Norecho, uliba ganda bange mwena, abata wagira NRM, most of whom subscribe to NUP now. I'm saying that because most majority of the people benala yiva celebrating, they actually subscribe to NUP. I don't know if there's any more aba aba celebrating zenga tebali nga siwa nga wa FDC or wa uh, ANT or any other parties. Nenjo get you know based on my circles um, and mainly because of the people that I saw celebrating this death. Nti tuedeko tumanye nti no mukufirwa tuchusenga muko tuleme kubela bwetyo. Even when we are hurting, but imagine you have a food day, Brenda Nabu Kenya, Frank, Cheyune, there are so many. We do not celebrate death. Mungeli yoko ewa nati olavye cheka chikutu seko na chinavye chwa. Mwanka te atawo tugenda kutuwa tugenda kufana na angawo vetuwa gala ukuchusa mu government. But that's a conversation for another day. Today we are trying to interrogate the question who killed Katumba Wamala's daughter, who killed Katumba Wamala's driver, who killed Muhammad Chirumira, who killed Major Chigundu, who killed Justice John Kagezi, who killed Kaida. That's a report that we haven't received. The guy was killed in the 80s. 
when will that report come out? Government teacher to Gamba. Mr. Welobo, your thoughts? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, my brother Henry. So, um, actually, if you look at Ugandan, uh, Uganda as Uganda from from the pre-colonial era, from the colonial to the pre, uh, from the pre-colonial era to the the colonial era, Uganda is not new to unexplained the killings. And uh, in fact, if you look back in memories be, uh, that are believed to be assassinations that happened in Uganda, there are so many extremely many and uh, when you look at this through the human resource i mean the human rights uh, prison the issue of human right to, to the, the rights to life uh, and arbitrary deprivation of, uh, of, uh, of 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 life is actually something that is not owned by anybody it's 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 somebody that is entitled uh, life by god so someone to take life from someone is really appalling. But to answer the question, your question of who is behind these killings, it's uh, it's 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 only discussion that we can just have uh, like an assessment, analysis of, but also actually to clarify, we are not going to be here, and in fact, even we may speculate, yes, but we are not going to have any conclusive. Uh, finger and say, okay, this is this is so and so that killed so and so. We shall have to speculate. There are so many reports that have been uh, uh, pulled out, especially if you look at from the 1970 when uh, Okoya, uh, Brigadier Okoya, was killed. Now, Brigadier Okoya, of course, was uh, a young officer in the in Obote's government. Now, uh, if you remember that uh, in 19 in 1969. Obote was almost assassinated. There was an attempted uh, assassination on Obote, and uh, because Okoya was um, was was a brigadier, but of course uh, lenient to his boss, and at the time, of course, uh, uh, General uh, General Amin was was the one uh, arming the I mean uh, manning the, the the army. So there was he was a suspect, and uh, following. Uh, uh, the, the 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 assassination attempt. Uh, the Olo Okoya was found dead in his home in Gulu. But of course, there were so many questions about who killed him. But in actual sense, when uh, when they did uh, a, uh, uh, some form of uh, reports and uh, assessments of that murder, uh, they found out that it is actually Captain. Uh, Gue Deco, Gue Deco, and uh, at the time, of course, Gue Deco was uh, very uh, was was the one that had uh, was given the instruction, and he was actually arrested, and some other army officers were arrested and taken to Luzira prison. But the funny part of that story is that in 1971, when Amin finally came into power. Amin actually appointed. Uh, first of all, he commanded. He, re he released the 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 the, the, the people um, that uh, that were that were initially arrested. Yes, yeah. in fact, the people they were that were arrested, and then actually promoted them. <laughs> right. He promoted them, and uh, the people that were implicated in the uh, uh, in. Uh, in the inquiries that made the inquiries and investigations all of them were killed you get the point right. now uh, when you take such 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 um, examples there are so many examples we can look at we can look at the uh, chief justice uh, ben kiwanuka right uh, in 1972 now yeah. ben kiwanuka all of us at least a few of us millennials of course know about some of those stories yes but but if you look at ben kiwanuka was one of the the, the, the biggest chief justice that we had in Ugandan history, the, the one that brought at least some uh, so many procedures and processes that we see today in, in Uganda. But of course, he was there for a very short time, very short time. Now, 
uh, why did he, was he there for a very short time? Because of uh, political ambitions. When he had the political ambitions and he tried to contest against his boss, right. uh, which was at the time of course Obote. And if you remember, in nineteen uh, in nineteen um, seventy. Uh, in 1969, 70, 1970, actually, the contest that was between uh, the, 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 the Catholic and then the Protestants. Now, because Ben Chiwanga was a Catholic, and then you have uh, the Protestants that were uh, backing Obote, and then you have the Buganda Kingdom and all these other things. So he had the ally, uh, 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 alliance also with Buganda Kingdom at the time, and also he was favored by the British. And uh, of course, if you look at the the the, the Ben Chiwanuka from the the, the masterminds of, uh, he was also a suspect in the attempted assassination of Obote, that which I talked about. So actually, he because of that, Obote when Obote won, of course, finally when Obote won that contest, that uh, that race uh, of being a president, then he had uh, he he there is a, there are rumors, there are suspicions that. Uh, two years later, in 1971, of course, uh, 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 the then Amin, of course, uh, when he toppled the government of Obote. Eh? Right. It is uh, actually when now uh, the, 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 the fearlessness of uh, the chief justice came one-on-one -on, -one on him. And he, in fact, if you, if you look at uh, Amin, Amin was a little bit smarter. He, he appointed the uh, Ben Chiwanuka. Right. Okay. When yeah. he appointed, of course, Ben Chiwanuka, remember Ben Chiwanuka had already grievances with his boss, which was the former boss of Milton Obote. Right. And when, when Ben Chiwanuka was very fearless uh, against uh, Amin and all these other things, we all know what happened. He was just picked up from his. When Ben Chiwanuka office. was very fearless uh, against uh, Amin and all. And uh, from the offices, which is the High Court, right. the High Court of Uganda. And uh, all before we know it, he, he he was shot dead, you know, at a state lodge when he was taken to to to, to see Amin, and of course now for Ben Chiwanuka is even worse. His remains, his his his, his body has never been located since then. Right. Yeah. Now, if you look at such murders, it's like clear, you can really clearly see it through the mirror, but you cannot even. Uh, the, the, at the time, there was no one that was courageous enough to really come back, come front uh, to front uh, Amin and say, "You have done this. You have done this." You. It is until when his time came, because he killed so many people, including the Janan Lumu Luums that we <coughs> celebrate today, the, yes. the, the, the Archbishop Janan Luum in 1977. So. Uh, if you look at uh, 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 the, the 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 precedence of killings, it has been ongoing since. The it has become a culture within Uganda yes. political. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, along the, the Ugandan political landscape, but, but the, actually, actually, the most interesting ones that that will will follow are even much much interesting because if you look at uh, the the the, the Kairas that you're talking about. Now those ones are even much later. Yes, yeah? yes. Yeah? But, well, you but, know the, the, the reason why I'm talking about uh, the, the the deaths that have happened during the last 35 years, despite yeah. the, the the history of killing uh, that yeah. has been happening within Uganda, uh, as mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, clearly uh, stated, uh, is because of the rhetoric that the current regime came with when they, they, they took over the country. For example, uh, there's this uh, audio that has been going on uh, mm. from Mr. M7, as you can see here. It will not do for you to be a DA in a district and people are murdered and you don't arrest the murderers. It will not do for you to be a district police commander and people are being killed in your district and you don't, you don't know what's killed them. This will simply not do, will not work. I will not accept it. I will not preside over a country where a Ugandan is killed and the authorities do not know who has killed him. Does that sound like some, something that he has been thinking about? Because after doing that, 
many people have died, especially in the late, uh, in the 2000s uh, and beyond. Uh, we had the death of uh, Honorable Abiliga, Ibrahim Abiliga, who, by the way, was a staunch NRM guy, as you can see in this video. So, anyways, uh, that, that, that was the assassination uh, of uh, Honorable Ibrahima Biliga. We still haven't received the report. We have We don't know who killed Biliga. Uh, we don't know why he was killed. Uh, it seems his case has been swept under the rug as well. Uh, yes. Any thoughts? Uh, did, uh, have you had a, a, any uh, conversations about Abiriga? Any speculations? Uh, well, my brother, it's uh, it's really very uh, tricky in terms of um, uh, when you dig deeper into Abiriga's death, you you'll notice that few days prior to his uh, assassination, he had an appointment with the president. Confirmed. Right. Yeah. Now that that speaks volumes because the questions around that is what was the appointment for and what was it all about? And uh, if it was about his political uh, uh, environment, what was his political environment like? Was there a threat to his life? Was there intimidations? Were, were there some some issues or reports that he needed to take to the president? Were there things that he had that someone was interested in? There are so many things, factors that you can consider in there. So there you will be able to look at the 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 the, the motives, the 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 motives of uh, people who are keeping their dirty linens under the rug, you know. So in other words, they do not want some things to be unearthed or some things to be known or issues that they have within the general public or the general political at, uh, arena that Tamale Mirundi always call the mafia. They, they do not want that to arise. And of course, when they, they do, they will notify uh, uh, the, 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 the main man, the main person. So that gives a, a, a particular understanding that Abiriga had information. He might, he must have had something that someone within the system was interested in, or in other words, it is it is the talk of 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 of, of speculation. But it is actually when you start uh, adding up the dots, they make a lot of sense. And uh, also, if you can, if you can weigh weigh Abiriga's uh, political ambition and the and the influence and all this uh, the love that he had. You will not see a dot of uh, of issue or, or anybody wanting to kill him. Eh? But you see, these are people that uh, that expressed openly their passions, their their love for for their political party. Besides all the other things, negativities that we know about the political party to called NRM. Yeah. yeah. But but they uh, he had the passion to completely and boldly uh, move with passion of uh, of his party so it is not like those people who are mediocres within the party system that always want to be closer to the to the to the bread but they do not want to break the 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 the, the, the wood to prepare yeah. the to prepare the food so in other words there is a lot that undercover that we do not know inside the system that we actually do not know because there are even enemies of Museveni inside the system more than what I, what he would look at as the opposition of Uganda. Right. 
No, but the thing is, well, when you go back to that conversation that uh, uh, Mr. Museven, the rhetoric that Mr. Museven came with uh, mm. when he was becoming president, and then uh, Kaira dies, right? Uh, yeah. Randomly. Kaira dies randomly. Uh, actually, actually. He got assassinated, right? Actually, yeah. before before Kaira's death, before Kaira's death, there was uh, Andrew Luko. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, oh, I mean, I mean, oh yeah, he's Kaira, of course, he's Kaira. Right. <laughs> in nineteen in eighty seven. Right. Now, his Kaira. First of all, the story of Kaira is that uh, he was an ally of Museveni. Yeah. Be, be, before you go into Ka Ka Kaira's story, uh, mm. I, I, I think uh, I, I think I'm going to give the the viewers some context. Ka Kaira was recently honored by the government of Uganda, but I'm going to to show you the reactions from. Uh, uh, family uh, and friends of Kaira regarding that so, uh, ca recognition or award. David, thank you for joining us. First of all, we know you have reservations on the reward that you received on the 9th of June. What do you have to say about it? Of course, we can't say that the Luero Triangle isn't worth it, but given the magnitude and the pedigree of the late and his contribution towards liberating the, the nation, we believe it's the lowest rank of rewarding him. Actually, most of my colleagues and members of the family were ungrateful for what the, gov for what the state did. Uh, the reward that was given to Dr. Andrew Takome Kaira during the Heroes Day celebrations was 60,000 Uganda shillings. That was the reward. The government says this reward, especially the 60,000 that you're talking about, is only facilitation for people who are coming to pick up uh, these medals. Did you get that information before? I think that should have been made clear from the word go, that that, that would be his facilitation. But in handing, in handing the envelope to us, uh, it was clearly made. It was clearly made known that they were appreciating him for his contribution in the liberation struggle. Uh, this was the moment where the government would reconcile. Okay, they were ready to receive the reconciliation in one way or the other, but ridiculing the whole fu function with a reward of 60,000 and a, triang a Luero Triangle Medal was really embarrassing. There is word that has been moving out there that your family met with the president at State House. The family has never been invited by the president before. If it is to be made, then that is after 33 years. We are fed up of this intimidation, the moment you talk of Andrew Kaira, it's the name alone is associated with death or being killed. Most people wouldn't wish to, to associate with you. Thank you very much, David, for... The, the name Andrew Kaira is associated with death. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Especially uh, the reward that uh, apparently was given. I think uh, if you look at the association to death is because Kaira himself also was a rebel leader. Right. Don't forget that he was uh, he was the one leading the, the Uganda Freedom Movement. Yes. And he was alongside because Museveni was in the NRA and then um, uh, 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 for him also he had his. But within they are fighting within the same uh, the same region. And in fact, Kaira at, at one point had a clash with Museveni because he, he, he wanted to own the, the liberation within the central region, which was the Buganda region. And he, 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 deserved, he, wanted to, he was trying to rally for the support of the Buganda. Right. You know? yeah. and, and of course, Museveni uh, had already captured quite a number of uh, traditional leaders and all these other uh, strong um, uh, Buganda regional kind of uh, leadership. So right. he had an upper hand. That's why Museveni uh, 
uh, actually won the, the, the to, to topple the Tito Kelo's government. However, when you look at uh, how Museveni played his cards post that struggle, post their disagreement in the bush with Kaira, and then when, because there are a lot of things that Museveni also got to understand from Kaira's movement as a, a rebel leader, and they also had the same thing in common just as we are seeing the opposition of today, because the opposition then was getting uh, acquiring guns and going to the bush. So it meant that they were fighting for the same cause. And uh, Museveni, of course, at the time was a very, very understandable person. And, and uh, he, when, when he, of course, toppled the government of Tito Kelo, he, he called uh, uh, Kaira, okay? And when he, he actually appointed him even a minister, when he appointed him a minister in 1986, the Minister of Energy. But inside the system of NRA itself, the clique, there was already some bad blood. Much as uh, Museven did not have any issue maybe with the Kaira at the time, but there was an issue within Museven, surrounding Museven itself, because he was looked well, as... Well, as the thing is, we, we, so people may ask that if you think that Museven didn't have any issues with Kaira, why, why hasn't he released the, the report? Uh, uh, actually, actually, Mr. Henry, if you allow me, uh, when, when, when you follow the story clearly, it's, like, it's that uh, the, 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 when he appointed him, there are reports that started coming out that he was uh, uh, trying to plot a coup against the government. Now, of course, a government that has just gained power is very un very unstable it's very shaky any rumor any kind of rumor that you are trying and remember he had a very powerful movement and he was equal almost equal to museveni so meaning that he was a threat to museveni at the time so there were already rumors that he was trying to plot here and there and as a minister he was arrested and when he was arrested after the arrest and Museveni, of course, investigated everything, they found out that he had nothing to do with the coup. He had actually dissolved his movement as well. Now, the remnants of Kaira, of course, had some movements here and there, but they also discovered that it was, it was weak and it was not no more. That's when Museveni ordered for his release. Okay? Museveni released Kaira from, from prison, and then 10 days... Ten days after the release of Kaira, eh? that's when they shot. They, he was found dead. Assassinated. Yeah, yes, at that's his home. Yeah. That's when they, they murdered him at his home. You get the point. Now, yeah. this Kaira uh, murder was sparked a very big was the biggest that Museven that, that sparked too much criticism for Museveni's government at the onset. Okay. Now, it remember at the at in 1987. Uh, the, the, the British, of course, were still in there. Kaira's report, Scotland Yard, <laughs> this is a public record, even Scotland Yard has never released it. It's not just Museveni's government, it's not only just Museveni's government, but his mother, the British, the Scotland Yard, the special investigation that was made by the British, it has never been it has never been re released. Scotland yet seems to have handed the report over to, to the government of Uganda, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, and, unless I, I got some the, the, the information, uh, uh, yes, Museveni, of course, Museveni requested for it. Museveni requested for it, and yeah. uh, when, when it when it fell into his hands, it it has never been released exactly to date. And uh, for for him. To be uh, to be given an a, a reward, he deserved he deserved much much better or bigger than what they 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 they, they have rewarded. And even I feel that is too late to even recognize him. It's Out of the years 30, later, that, uh, yes, I think that was uh, a few a few years ago. Like yes, so, uh, but if you look at the 33, 33 years to recognize somebody that uh, played a very pivotal. Role. Yeah. Yes, in uh, because if Kaira had not negotiated and accepted to work together with Museveni, actually there was going to still be turmoil within uh, the, the Luero Triangle. 
because Kaira was a very powerful uh, leader. He was very strong. He was unequal to Museveni. So <clears throat> there is a lot of speculations, but those speculations, of course, point to one truth and one fact and one direction. And that direction, of course, is the government. The government has, a, has knowledge. Yeah, so, uh, and, uh, as we talk about uh, uh, UFM, uh, I, I want to bring the, the general secretary at the time of, of that group, which, which is Kaila's group. At the age of 83, Peter Poli Mochibi exudes a rare memory, an edgeless recollection of politics and history of Uganda, with his name appended among the revolutionary forces between 1981 and 1986 who changed the terrain of Uganda's politics. At his residence in Lusaze, Kampala, Muchibi is still disturbed by the news of his bush war comrade, Dr. Andrew Lutako Mekayira's Heroes Day Prize. If you are being serious and authentic, then do it right. Muchibi, who worked closely with Kayira in Uganda Freedom Movement, UFM, and later Federal Democratic Movement, FEDM, as Secretary General and a member of the High Command, believes Kayira's spirit would best be honored with answers to his unresolved murder. Don't reward Andrew, my friend, with a medal before you tell us who killed him, why he killed him. The former rebel says he watched the awarding ceremony with contempt, likening it to a ploy to disrepute the image of high-profile servants. It is a comedy I saw. Here was Kaira being rewarded. And next door, we were rewarding people who had violated the 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 the, 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 the committee approach to settling grievances of the land disputes in the country they had been brave to stop her to inquire into i don't know maybe maybe my mind works very very crudely but to me that in itself was an abuse he further questions the role of government in ensuring the welfare of the Kaira family. You see, this country has not rewarded Andrew. That's why his family is asunder. If we are grateful to Kaira's contribution, we should have brought together the family and supported it because he gave his blood for this country. Just like other disgruntled revolutionaries, Mochiwi stings the failure of the state to champion the 1981 to 1986 revolutionary values. Democracy and federalism. I feel sorry that I'm going to die before either of these two are achieved. Because you have not achieved democracy yet. On whether he should be rewarded for his contribution to the war, Muchibi had this view. Me? For a medal? To get a medal? I told you, I did not fight for medals. No, I don't need it. Andrew Lutako Mekayira was the founding chairman of UFM. He was murdered on 9th March 1987, shortly after he was acquitted of treason. 33 years later, he was rewarded for his revolutionary contribution. And then you start giving him medals. You are abusing him. Report filed by Paul Kayonga for NBS Live at 9. That is the report uh, that was made on Andrew Takume Kaira's reward ceremony. Uh when they were following which meant Andrew Takume Kaira Bamu uh Emitual Mukaga mu something uh Gary Wadi of course never one in Medo uh Omami Ayavudeko Yali General Secretary wa UFM uh wa Uganda a freedom movement omwami oyo Mumula Yingri Jalio Muniv. His central question is Who killed Kaida? Before you give him a medal, tell us who killed him. Eh? Who killed him? Uh, my, my, my colleague George is here to. to, to... Well, uh, those are very fundamental questions. <clears throat> right. uh, you see, Mr. Muchibi asks the question that uh, everyone that is interested in Kaira's mother asks daily that before you consider having the reward 
of someone in the caliber of Kaira, why don't you first of all consider releasing the report that uh, they investigated the murder? And something unique about that murder was there was an independent, because in Uganda, it's very difficult to have an independent uh, uh, investigation. Right. Now, the independent investigations has actually extremely authentic conclusion of the cause of the perpetrators and everything that everyone would want to know. However, it, it does not, it does not uh, surprise uh, me to see uh, Kaira being rewarded after an assumption that all is forgotten. Nothing has happened. We, were, we, we have never been here. Nothing has happened. Let us continue. So that is the assumption. Actually, it is like a mockery to his family. Looking at how his um, uh, how they are speaking, it's it's how his uh, son is speaking yeah. about it. It's 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 like a mockery. Even if it is to me, uh, if that was my father, I feel that would be like an insult. It's an insult to the legacy of Kaira as a strong man, most especially from the central region, but most especially a liberational leader like someone that would have been the museveni we see today eh? it, it, it is it's a mockery of, uh, of of his legacy so with that it's, it's it's something that of course will continuously get subdued it will always get suppressed the truth will always be suppressed and it will always be under undercover but of course there are certain things that have piled up that actually this government will will have to vomit them one at one point the, the government is so pregnant with so much truth about people's death and so much about people that they have to vomit or uh, or give it out one time so, at yeah. a point when when everyone is tired because people people will always tolerate but time comes when people get become tired and that moment is coming for for, for all these things, atrocities to come out, all these uh, un, un, unexplained murders, uh, will, the truth will always will come out at the end of the time. At the end of the time, well, when, when, we, when we talk about truth, uh, we need to uh, get back to the institutions that uh, usually seek for the truth, and that is the justice system. Uh, I, I, and in this conversation, I want us to go back to, to justice uh, Joan Kagezi, one of the most uh, prominent, most uh, established, well-established judges uh, in, 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 in the contemporary Uganda, uh, who was also assassinated uh, and whose report we haven't received yet. Uh, here is the assassination of Joan Kagezi. <laughs> We were like five minutes, I mean five vehicles from us. So we had the gun, I had gunshots. And I call talk telling my bodyguard that think this is this this those are bullets. Those that those are gunshots. So I went like ten meters and I parked. So when I saw checked behind, I actually saw it was a government number plate. So as we got out of the vehicle, people were saying, Mnange So I came, I saw the children were shouting. Mommy, 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 mommy. So I went and shook one of the girls. I said, who is the Mulamuzi? That's when the, the daughter said, Joan Kageza, and I knew. Of course, I knew. She... Her neck, I don't know. I couldn't check properly, but there was blood all over her chest. Yeah. But there were two bullets I had. 
They wear two bullets. Hmm? So uh, immediately, I was just there playing pool in that kaba. I had two bullets. Immediately, I told, hey, let us try. Because I know this lady, she normally passes here and buy some fruits. Immediately, the, these guys did not even stop. I tried to tell my friend, let us chase. But we feared because these guys were armed. Because we had almost like three border borders there, my friends. Then they also, they were scared. They said, no, we are not going to chase these guys because they are armed. They just took off, took off up to Nigeria. <laughs> Close to the car. Before I did not but then I said Of course, of course, uh, as we all remember, that report has never come out. Uh, you have seen the uh, Inspector General of Police, uh, then uh, General Kale Kaihura, ka, uh, coming to uh, to the scene, to the crime scene, uh, and what happened next, most of you already know. Uh, of course, they were always quick to come uh, to the scenes, to the crime scenes, but the action thereafter is usually uh, something to search for. We do not know what goes, what goes on uh, after such incidents happen. Do not know what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, John Kagezi is not the only one uh, that has also faced that kind of death. Any any thoughts, uh, Mr. Willow? You are muted. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, actually, most of the 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 the, the, the murders that occurred uh, with regards to settling uh, certain cases and all these other things in Uganda, some of them you can clearly see. But <clears throat> if you look at the case in point for uh, 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 the, the, the justice, she is just like in 1993 where, where the, 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 the professor was, uh, Professor Dan, uh, if you remember, Mudola. Now, Professor Dan Mudol, of course, was gunned down uh, using a, a, a grenade just in one day. Here. Okay? Now, that happened in daylight, broad daylight, but broad daylight. But what do you think was behind it? It was just because he was in the, he was the chairperson, he's the chairman of the Constitutional <laughs> Review Commission. You get the point? Now, there, there, there are, of course, always elements uh, in the government that want to, um, to, to, to create uh, situations that, that can intimidate, that can, of course, create situations that, that silence the truth. And uh, if you look at uh, this particular case also, there are so many people that were arrested in that, uh, in that regard. But actually, when you, got, when you get to look at the people they have arrested, uh, the people who are witnesses to the, to, the, to the crime are the ones who are being arrested as, this, as, as suspects. Of course, they can arrest you as a suspect, but if they can get the information that you know and then they let you go, some of these people are the ones that served and uh, my, some of them are still serving in, in, in prisons to date. It breeds an understanding where uh, today, if such a crime scene ha uh, occurs, of course the government officials are quick to run to, to, the, to the crime scene. But the locals that might have witnessed the occurrence, the, 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 the actual murder, they, they, they are the first witnesses. They would be able to provide the, the primary information to, to, the, to, the, to the cases. But something peculiar about all these murders are that these people are paraded, they're taken for a statement, and they never come back. They are either released much later 
many years after they have served the, so many uh, years in prison without even being produced in, in court, or even when they are produced, they are, their cases are always adjourned. And you ask yourself, who is in charge? Who, who, how big is this? How big is this uh, atrocity? I mean, uh, this, um, uh, this person, these people, these uh, elements, who are they? What are they? What do they represent? And actually, if you look at that case, it coincides with the, the whole, it comes right from the time 2012, right from 2012, where the, 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 the clerics were, were being gunned down left, right, and center, over 20. Then it, it, it zeroes, comes down up to the time when he, she was actually handling such cases of the ADF, uh, Mukulu, uh, the, 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 the commander the, 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 of ADF, Mukulu, Mr. Mukulu. And if you look at how it tags along, if you look at how it, there is someone who is interested. You know, in Uganda, when some people are suffering, the big, the big wigs are benefiting. When there is war, someone is benefiting when there is a, when, when there is a problem the, like now if you look at the the adf adf struggle that, and people how many people were displaced in in the neighboring congo and in in, in parts of kasese there were so very many but if you see that there is some connection inside and between elements in the government and inside the adf whereby there must have be, there must be some truth that was going to come into light and it's always fight to silence the truth it's right. never it's never it's never the it's, it's you cannot even understand uh beyond that it's just you can't it's, I like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's very interesting that you're you, you're actually saying that there's no understanding of how things uh transpire like for example when we move forward to Kawesi's assassination, mm. uh, this is the assistant AI, I, IGP, and like the the circumstances, the, the circumstances under which he was murdered are still unknown, even though he was uh, he, he was assistant uh, uh, inspector general of police. Uh, Kawesi's death, for example, let me play a video here. <laughs> The heavy security. Police spokesman Andrew Felix Kawesi set off from his home in Kulambiro Chisasi, a Kampala suburb early morning, together with his bodyguard, Kopolo Kenneth Erau, and their driver, Constable Godfrey Wambeyo. It is said they were proceeding to Uganda Christian University, where Kawesi was expected to address final year students on choice of careers. Little did they know that some were silent riding on a motorbike were following them with just one intention taking the life of Kawesi and his minders. It is said that at about 9.30 a.m., as Kawesi's official car approached Kua village, near the Jomai border border riders' stage, the assailants opened fire and released a number of bullets at Kawesi's car. The bullets shattered the driver's side on windscreen, killing the driver and Kawesi's bodyguard. The assailants then shot many more bullets through the side doors hitting Kawesi, who was in the back seat. The assailants then rode off as soon as they had established that they had finished off their targets. It's a very unfortunate, isn't it? Very, very unfortunate. But we ask Ugandans to remain calm. But they could do away with his hands. I think we did some things, but do come such a job. I must. I'm going to go for a game that I know is okay. Hey, come on, 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 It's so unfortunate. This is the guy who always moves whenever he's moving on the road. He never drives so fast. He goes so slow. Whenever he's going, he stops and greets whoever he finds on his way. A few minutes after the incident, senior police officers, including the Inspector General of Police General Kale Kaihura, arrived at the scene. Medical personnel led by Police Director Medical Services, Dr. Moses Biaruhanga, called in to handle the bodies. <laughs> Sin of crime detectives also pieced together whatever they could. Later, three police ambulances carrying Kawesi's body and that of his driver and bodyguard were driven from Kulambiro to City Mochari in Mulago National Referral Hospital. 
Squads of Boda Boda riders stormed the mortuary, while some mourners who wanted to enter the mortuary were blocked. Others wheeled as soon as they reached the mortuary. These incidents have become commonplace in Uganda in the last 35 years. Uh, there is more people that have been killed through similar situations and under, under similar circumstances. Uh, people are killed uh, on the border, using border border, uh, the border borders or the so-called border borders. Of course, we do not know if they are really border borders. Uh, of course, there are also Muslim clerics that have, uh, have been assassinated over the years. Uh, before we, we, we dive into this conversation, I want to acknowledge uh, some research that was done by uh, a few generalists who have identified a few people that have been killed over the years. Uh, no, that's not the one, sorry. Uh, that's not the one, I think. The heavy security deployment at Chisasi Chisotau. Is that the one? Uh, the heavy security deployment at Chisasi Chisotau Road signaled the magnitude of what had happened in the area. This is where a silence shot at the car in which General Edward Katumba Wamala was traveling with his daughter Brenda Nantongo, who was killed alongside. Sorry, that's, uh, that's not the right video that I want to share. Emiaka Jekulungude, Ngobutemu Befano Nyiliza Kodela Kore Doko Abaddo Mogezi wa Polisi Mugwanga, Andrew Felix Kawis, Bukole Bwa. Mubanga li Amiaka Ejita Suketano, Abantu Abaziba Tilimbura Mungeri Emu, Molimu Sheikh Abdu Karim Sentamu, Yati Wabili Mubili, Apri Wabili Kuminebili, Sheikh Abdu Jawali Sentunga, Yati Wamu Agusto Wankumebili Kuminebili, Sheikh Yunus Abbe Kamudungu, Yati Wamu Agusto Waka Wankumebili Kuminebili, Haj Abbe Kachwewa, Yati Wanga Abili Murumu Joni Wankumebili Kuminebili, Sheikh Dr. Abdu Kadil Muwaya, Yati Wanga Abili Mutano, December Abili Kuminena, Sheikh Mustafa Bahiga, Yati Wanga Abili Munana, December Abili Kuminena, Sheikh Ismaili Sebugwao, Yati Wamu Januari Wankumebili Kuminetano, Omwabi wa government Joan Kagezi yatibwa nga asatu mu machi wa 25 Sheikh Abdul Rashid Wafla yatibwa nga abili mulumo mei wa 25 Sheikh Ibrahim Hassan Kilia yatibwa nga asatu June wa 25 Kone meja Sheikh Muhammad Chigundu yatibwa nga abili mukaga November 20 mukaga Wabula buli omwasi galaye unaganya ku nsongezi werako olwe ngeri je bigwao ne je bironda olwa atene watabwa wali pote fuluma Ngo jeke chokubanti abazigu wabako lobulu mba ganyuno Babe kusa kubatujuba ADF Habaju nyisenyo bana Uganda ni balirano Mwitundu ebye nja ulo Enguanguli za basajabano bata ambulia kupichi pichi Eza kazi wako elia boda boda Chino chongiro kuleta wechibuzo Obango umuli mogu bade guanguli za abanji kubye ntambula Kachate gufuse kagumba wegoge Wabula wadeguli gutio Nemundu abatama nyangamba bano zivaka alakala na zo Ovono budo wazo na chuchibuzo Ichicha ata kuzava kuru mbio kweri nde mitwe Kuchino government yabade ruanyi wezi zingirile Okuruanyi se mundu ezili mubantu mbenyi wa mateka Nganeje vudeko elike mundu ezaku nganyiziwa Nezo kebwa Sia chochoka na haba tewele zivuwa kwenye njigira mbutufju Jolia haba na mwe misango beja kamo vi Bagi rekele wibuni na zevi talibi muu Era haba muu balina mkorokoni Jowa ni kagezi omuwa liwa government Ya limu mitambo jowa misango guwa haba liba vunani wagu kutaga bomu Mkume bili kumi Ngena kuzomweza satu mumachu wankume bili kumi etano Haba chami yako katali ya kugule yoko zisawaka Bwe wata haba sedekezi jewawa matuka mpawe ya manya au Nibamulu misechivu, niru kaza kaza. Irawe gutawe gwari, nekwe yali omogezi wa wasira mwechivuli. Sheikh Hassan Kiria, onaeba mkuba wata, mujuni wa umaka gwegumu. Mubimu kubiwanu ziwanti, yekalu nsambuli la wenje gezi zezi guawo. Mwemuli nechobu tabawobu kumibu mala, nadela kubantu nguwa mla mzijuwa ni kagezi, Muhammad Chigundu, ne Andrew Felix Kawesi. Government na ye funze chonga kukuranyi sebi kurabino Iranga ni wetu ogerira Walu wabatunka ne misange jefana njiza konga jino Chokeche nyamiza kukukanda alirizi wako alipote na mrukfu Kuibabizuli duwa kukunonye liza kuno 
omuyigo gwa bamwali bano gwatandi sedda erango omudumizi wa majjo wo kuntikko president yole kakuta mseveni yaisiza de kiragiro buli rugudo lusibwe ko kamere nkesi oboli awa bachamu bano bana bagwa mbufu atenga na bakuru mu byokwerinda bafulumiza de bifananyi byabateberezebwa kefas mayumba yaumbye mba report eno like to acknowledge the, the researcher, Mr. Kefas Mayumba. I think he works for uh, Okebe TV. Uh, so as you have seen, those are some of the people that have uh, been killed over the years. Uh, but those are not the only ones. Of course, there's more. Uh, Mr. Chirumira, Muhammad, uh, most recently, Katumba's daughter and driver. Any thoughts? Yeah, uh, when you consider the <laughs> the factors and uh, the factors surrounding both both uh, assassinations, uh, they they came from somewhere. When you look at uh, they are among the top ranking uh, security officers that have been killed in the in the in the years. You consider people like Mayombo, for example. Right. Number Mayombo consider Kazini major. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you look at uh, uh, reasons and situations that surround their death, they are really, really very appalling to even the, the layman's ear. It's uh, when you look at um, uh, uh, Kazini, for example, who was uh, assassinated, I mean, killed by a woman, you know, like right. say, a woman uh, striking. A, how strong was this woman to really uh, put? A, a major general down, a, a general, a four-star general, yeah. to the ground to the extent of hitting him. Even, of course, there are some reports that uh, I saw uh, that I read at the time that talked about he was uh, he was drunk and all these other things. But there is quite a lot that does not make uh, sense uh, when you see the way they handled the whole situation. It, it gets dissolved, and we continue with life as usual but yet what would have been the case uh for example for these cases uh all we all know how um truly allegiant some of these people would be to the regime and how they would be doing their work actually to the favor of the regime but some of the cases that we have seen uh, over the years is actually in fights and the uh, troubles that are stemmed within the system that they work at, that they are in because when you consider uh the 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 the, the aigp for example there are lots of questions that you can ask first of all yes he had the the the, the, the whole trail of um, of uh, of bodyguards but when you go back to the crime scene uh, because even how they handle the crime scene itself is very, 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 very weak. Yes. The crime scene itself, the first officers to arrive are the top big officials of the government. Then when you question how, uh, how the death occurred, because if you look at how they escaped, how would you react if, um, if a sudden gunfire came in? There should have been a fight and flight. Right. Yeah. Someone, if if you are in a, in, a, in if you're caught unaware, there is that normal adrenaline reaction of yes. flight, flight or fight. Yes. Now, consider the crime scene. How was how was the car situated to to prove that there was a there was an attempted flight mod? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how was it? What what proves that there was a fight mod? Eh? Except for the for the report that uh, preliminary report that I read that showed that uh, the, the the guard was instead uh, is in a position that looked like he was moving towards the back of the car where uh, AIGP was. Now that is very peculiar. You know, it 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 sounds very weird because look at if you compare that with the with the with the with the Katumbas at least you see that the bodyguard actually rescued him he fought for his life and he's tr he tried to save save and actually what proves that at least you shot a bullet that at least tried to scare away the the, the assailants now when you look at also the 
how these people were trailed and how they ended up accomplishing their mission, how everything came in with a lot of fire, with a lot of power. You see, we have seen the suspects. The suspects look like this. Who, who, which people have been paraded so far right. that that show the lookalikes of the, 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 in fact, even they had to, they had to have like a, an amount of money on the on the heads that yeah. that looked like those those ones. Yeah. But what what is there to show the public or Ugandans that or the relatives or the family at least even if the the whole Ugandan population would uh, are, are not aware. But what about their families? At least if they can be able to see uh, conviction of the government trying to take up uh, responsibility to look deeper. But if you consider also another angle of um, of of the expertise, because someone that fires a, an AIGP, a fully trained AIGP right. of his caliber, yeah. a person that commits himself to assassinate a major general, four-star general in the names of uh, Katumba Wamala, you must be also extremely trained right. in the first place. So. You can't attack a general if you are not a general. At least you must have a one star <laughs> to attack a general. So there should be some way that these people are extremely trained to complete and accomplish these tasks or these, uh, these atrocities. But the actual killers, the actual persons, the actual culprits are hiding behind the real killers, behind the people that shot the guns. And that is how complicated it becomes. That's how complicated it becomes. Because inside the system, uh, they, 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 they have created um, a, a hitman kind of gang within the population now that, that work specifically to eliminate targets. They, give, they, get, they have an assignment and they, they work towards completing the assignment. Now, yeah. if the government is not committed to digging deeper into, into and finding out who, then actually their silence will still be at large. Whoever did yeah, the, the, the question is that uh, are the assailants really at large or are they within? Because if they are at large, then the, 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 there's a notion that the, the government doesn't really know who the assailants are. When they are in government, if they are in government, uh, then it means that the government actually knows uh, these are silence. But the question is, why can't the government apprehend these are silence? Because uh, as you also talked about the, 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 the issue of uh, big wigs coming to the crime scene first, uh, pretty much intercepting the forensic scientists' duties uh, to take take over the, the crime scene and produce conclusive investigation and give us the report, the, 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 the right reports that we need to, to, to know about these killings, it becomes very complicated when it's the senior uh, officers that are coming to the crime scene first within the, 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 the first three or four hours. Uh, mm -hmm. And that also happened to... to, 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 to to Afande Chirumira, when Afande Chirumira died within three hours, the, the, the president of the country was there. Uh, and the mm. people, uh, uh, some people are asking, why was he so interested in coming uh, instead of waiting for the uh, report from his junior officers? Uh, this is what happened when uh, Chirumira was assassinated. Tension, horror, and fright gripped residents of Bulenga when Muhammad Chirumira, a well-known critic of the Uganda police force, was shot multiple times at around 8 p.m. on Saturday night. According to eyewitnesses, Chirumira was driving a Toyota Corona UAG 228V in the company of a female colleague when they were shot at by men traveling on a motorcycle. They first hit the window, then they shot at them. The police officer died instantly. The assassin's motorcycle did not have lights 
and after the shooting it sped off towards Bulenga. They should account for the motorcycles that are used to kill, but this one was red in color and big. The shooter was dressed as though he were from a social function, and it could be Kirumira was being trailed all along. We took Kirumira to Mulago. See this blood. The woman was still alive, however, the traffic officers failed to pave way for us. But what we know is that shots were fired just right behind me here, and the vehicle is still there. We have police officers who are surrounding that vehicle. As you can see, the lights, the blue lights you're seeing, those are police patrol vehicles that are parked here and uh, trying uh, to investigate the situation. Later, scene of crime investigators cordoned off the area before they started gathering evidence. Three hours after the shooting, President Museveni visited the crime scene and engaged the gathered residents. He left the area a few minutes later with two eyewitnesses. Chirumira's death is the latest in a series of assassinations of high-profile individuals over the last few years. Many of these murders are yet to be solved and the murderers brought to book. Andre Nitwe, NTV, Bulenga. One of many murders that have been Yeah, uh, so Henry, uh, you see, for the case of Chirumura, it was really looking like uh, if you if you if you read the, the story of uh, Michael Shalita, yeah, yes, Michael Shalita was the the chief. Uh, of course, the he was the first among the first people that really did a recommendable job in uh, ISO, internal uh, internal security organization. Right. And at the, at the time, they were tasked to investigate the corrupt officials in the government. And because they were doing so, they were about to release a very hefty report that, that was going to put down very many uh, corrupt officials in the government. Uh, of course, you, you know what happened. He was found dead. He died. Uh, and uh, up to date, uh, no, no one has ever looked into the matter. There is no report, no case that is brought up and said, okay, these are the people that, that killed him. Okay, And this is something that happened in 1997 to cover up for uh, certain things that were going to come out. Just as I've been mentioning, look at Chirumira. I know Chirumira as a person because I, I, I was with him when he was taken to Kasese in Buera at the border of Congo. And Chirumira is a very, very committed person that I know him as a person. I personally know him. But while also in, 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 Kawe, in, in all the posts that he was being placed, he had the issue of fighting the wrong elements. Now, fighting the wrong elements in police is something that requires very serious guts. You can't be... A, a coward when you start. When you look at how he was trying to fight the criminals within the Nansana area, Kawe Mpe Nansana area right. corridors, where people were being hacked, where people, border borders were being uh, really? uh, you know, robbed and people were being hacked by you know very serious metal bars, a uh, time where robberies, theft in the areas. He did a very, very commendable job. But guess what happened? What, what was his reward? Instead, his bosses or his, this, uh, his big uh, people saw that as a threat. Yeah. So it also adds up to the question that what, what was the interest of these people in, in, in Kirumira fighting for the common person? Yet they were, their, their biggest and the most pivotal role is to safeguard, protect the Ugandans and their properties. Now, if Chirimura was doing that to the best of his abilities, he needed, in fact, a, a promotion. He needed a recognition, an award, and a, actually a recognition within the entire pro police force. But what we saw was Chirimura being paraded 
as being in subordinate uh, uh, yes. being paraded of insubordination right. being paraded of very petty crimes of right. chapati and yeah. all the like now you ask yourself what system what what police system is uganda running on where somebody that does good is 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 is, is rewarded with bad yeah. when you look at all the cases you look at the katumba wamala for right. crying out loud right. very 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 calm person very very interesting Meticulous. person yeah, very yes. guy, yeah. when you look at kawesi look at how he handled the buganda riot the riot right. uh, during the kabaka star uh, riot yeah. it was so so professional he exhibited a very serious professionalism now it also brings back the, the the common public question that is out there that there is there are people that were within the police force and the security force that benefit from crime okay now when people like chirumira come out to 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 uh, up in arms against people that are really committing these crimes because if you if you if you hear stories of how petty thieves and petty uh, robberies are happening in you in Kampala in the suburbs you hear names and you hear that oh so and so was arrested and released after a week who does that some of these people should be paraded and arrested produce in court serve their sentence produce more that they work with and then they they get the bad elements within the community and to make the community safe because you see this thing of community policing does not work if they arrest a suspect or a criminal a confirmed criminal today and then he's released the following day no. it meant that the rare people and elements in the police force that are really beneficiaries of the crime look at the look at consider traffic for example yeah, mm? yeah. the traffic officer uh if the one you see in the, on the road actually is having a boss that needs something to uh, that needs something after deployment they fight for this deployment they say deploy me at one day around about because they know when they deploy they get deployed at one day around about there is a lot of bribes that get get out from the taxi drivers and the motorists that are either reckless or doing going about their business fast so the boss at the end of the day will have to get a kitu kidogo at the end oh, of the great. day yeah they want now, food and butter yeah now chirumira was placed under so many uh, uh, appalling kind of situations whereby he was taken from post to post being transferred in fact at one point we even thought chirumira was fired or, 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 or fired from the police force but i was surprised when i met him in 2015 in uh, in 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 buera where police post when he was deployed there as uh, as the dpc now chirumira did a very very wonderful work there but they do that just to silence him so they did all those reshuffles and they silenced chirumira from kampala guess what happened his work was recognized by the president right. and his his job so the right hand of that was taking reports to to the president uh, of course uh, the insider was doing a good job until when he had to be redeployed back and that was a threat to the system in police and because it was a threat to the system in police these people of course started um um stalking him and making his life miserable and trying to bring all allegations and all sorts of uh, cri uh, crime uh, um, uh, lawsuits against him at one yeah. point of course he even wanted to resign because he was now fed up until when he gets the confidence that the, pre uh, the president was with him in support of his his movement now he was doing things boldly not knowing that someone was getting busted right that's someone that is getting busted chirumira dying already there was a confirmed appointment at state house with the president now what does that ring it rings a bell of suspicion that inside the police at the time there was someone and actually if you watched and listened to Museveni's uh, uh, 
uh, yes, the, 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 the words that he made during that, and actually, because even when you say that Museveni went to the crime scene, there are very few crime scenes that Museveni go to, but this one. That's the only of, one I think he has gone to. This one was of interest to him, personal interest to him, because there was personal issues that they were meant to discuss. And it was a big disappointment. And in fact, if you noticed that he even picked two suspects, I mean, not suspects, but eyewitnesses, yes, yes, yes. that he went along with. He went along with. Not that the police picked them, but he went along with them. It shows signals that he was no longer trusting the police. And if you saw, his, uh, uh, it changed the status quo in police completely, the death of Chirumira. Because that's when you that's when the troubles of Kale Kaihura now started. And uh, Museveni calling the bin uh, that there are bin weevils in the police yeah. that has to be get gotten rid of, that brought in the spy, uh, the, the, the spy cameras, that brought in the dissolution of some of the police units like the flying squad. So there are quite a number of uh, uh, clicks and situations that were created in the security system and apparatus of Uganda in the sense that it, it made manning or even knowing and understanding how the, the security works in Uganda very difficult. Look at how in the, in the work to work riots, hmm, where you find people who are calling themselves Boda Boda 2010 are beating up people, people who are calling themselves uh, uh, scouts, people who are carrying uh, sticks and rods, uh, civilians. But they have the power and authority and all the state protection. Eh? They're beating up people who are rioting peacefully in the, in the, in the face, like <laughs> lively when people, when the police is watching. And the police, of course, at the end, I remember Kale, Hayura, Kale Kaihura admitted and say, uh, those, uh, those, in fact, he first denied and then he accepted that right. these are crime preventers and even went ahead and uh, brought in the uh, made the crime prevention preventers uh, something something official in fact if you remember Museven even met uh, that that young man the one that is behind the crime preventers something something so uh, if you, i think it's yeah. sobi sobi now sobi was uh, was the one that uh, that, that was uh, being used uh, to, 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 to actually help them to control the mayhem within the downtown areas and all these other things. But actually, these are the criminals in the society that have to be get, gotten rid of. Now, get, getting back to the point of uh, uh, the, 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 the peculiarity of the assassinations, uh, someone in the capacity of, uh, of Chirumira, ASP Chirumira, would, at his capacity, would not would not be driving without a bodyguard. That right. is one. Yeah. Number two, such a person cannot have cannot be subjected to all that kind of stalking in terms of uh, guaranteeing what the good conduct in him, the good uh, service in him. You, in fact, whatever that they did was to it is shying away or taking away the people that would want to come into the force to serve the force diligently. Now, the peculiar thing about the murder also is the same border border, the same motorcycle uh, kind of way. Hmm? Yes. Whereby these people are fully well trained. They know their target. They know their mission and they know the aim. So you they come. Be, yes. Yes. They come execute the mission and they disappear and if if really the government is serious about getting to the bottom of this thing if only the government can come out with just one two three people that shot at some of these people that we are talking about and then come out with one two three of the people within the system that ordered because someone cannot just come from nowhere and shoot at someone like in the capacity of Katumba without a cause, without reasons. No, there yeah. should be the, 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 there is someone behind. So, meaning that if they produce those people yeah. that are really 
that are suspected, whether a minister, whether a security major, whether somebody within the government that is suspected, even if they say suspected to have right. masterminded the, the assassination, attempted uh, assassination. And hopefully this time they, they, they bring out people who are actually real suspects. Because uh, when you talk about suspects, uh, mm. they have brought so many Muslim clerics, they have brought so many Muslim colleagues as suspects, some of whom have been even put to jail, uh, but later on released without uh, government producing any evidence of them being actually suspects to, to, to those killings. Uh, mm. so when we talk about bringing suspects, we have to ensure that whoever they bring in as the, the suspects, they're actually mm. people who have uh, committed some crime in, in some way or another uh, to mm. warrant that, that, that suspicion uh, of mm. them in, uh, having been involved in those killings. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, if you look at the, the some of the suspects that we we have looked at in the in the Kale Haigura era, they are the some of them were like drama, like these guys of to quench the 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 the, the anger in the public, yes. to quench the 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 the, 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 the inquiries absolutely that are numerous within the public. Now, to 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 calm down the tense situations, they must be able to do something. However, I do not, for a doubt, I don't doubt that Ugandan security force has no capacity to investigate and to find out the killers. No. The question is, is whether they actually want to do that. Yes. Now, because the question what, is... <laughs> what are, because what we are trying to do today is to encourage mm. them uh, yes. in some way or another to address mm. the who killed question because that, that who killed question hasn't been answered uh, mm -hmm. and now that the, 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 the deaths are increasing in number mm. there are so many people who are dying on a regular basis every couple of months every couple mm -hmm. of years uh people dying in similar ways and the mm. government of uganda has completely failed to address the who killed question but you see, uh, Mr. Henry, you would want to think that, uh, okay, you see, Museveni has made his government to centralize within himself. So when we even uh, we are talking about when the government, the government, the government, we are actually meaning Museveni yes, himself. Exactly, we do. Now, the problem that, uh, the problem of pocketing institutions and the, and the two thing, the two thing, the institutions has crossed uh, Ugandans very serious losses in terms of I would you would expect a parliamentary commission of inquiry. You would expect the like, for example, when a, a chief justice—I mean, not a chief justice, but when the other justice, uh, Alan yes, Kagezi, yes. yes. when he dies, you would expect the judiciary to have an independent inquiry to, to towards the death. Then, when you see a person of AIGP, you would expect an in-depth inquiry just not just from the investigations forensics those are post-mortem as Museven calls them but you would expect an in-depth and independent inquiries from the now, police. yeah now look at the the katumba wamala that is a four-star general what would you expect in such an attempted murder attempted assassinations you would expect the army to come out in full swing of course, they are there. They, 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 it's under investigations. Those are matters that are all under investigations. Yes. Uh, are, be, are, before, are, we, before we venture into Katumba Amala, I think uh, Katumba Amala is going to be our last uh, mm. uh, case to investigate. Uh, mm. I want to. But I wanted to. I wanted to make this point. I wanted to make this make, point. Make that, that point, and uh, then we shall go into. I wanted to make this point that. If you look at, uh, 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 for example, the attempted uh, assassination that uh, this lady came out, Honorable uh, Nantaba. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, look at how they handled that case to the extent that even to date, you would not believe that the, it was an attempted assassination. In fact, even among the list of attempted assassinations or assassinations, you can, you, the, you it can is not it. listed. It is yeah. not listed. Yeah, it's not listed. They downplayed it to the to look to, to to treat it as though it was a minor incident to the extent that they took it uh as lay as it was but They're it was actually 
it was a very seriously clear plot. And if you ask questions of why was this person shot at when they found him after fleeing the scene and all these other things, if in, indeed this person was going to visit her, I mean, his children in school for visit, as the, as the notion wants to put it, as the narrative wants to have it, why wouldn't they have allowed him to leave to testify to that fact? That you see, I was only on my way, drive, moving my way. Why did he even uh, disappear? Why did he run? Huh? Right. Christine, why right. did he run away if he didn't have a crime? Those are all questions surrounding all uh, that, that kind of situation. Whereby we cannot sit back and look at a situation like that and, and fold our hands and say, okay, all is well. All is not well at all inside. Because you see, na the Nantabas, they have very serious battles that they have fought within and they have uh, stepped on so many toes within the system and within the big shots in the government itself. Now, having said that, being in, the, being in that she was fighting uh, the people that were trying to grab land and all these other things, that was a very serious inquisition they would want to yeah. start from. But there was nothing. Everything got silenced. In fact, even uh, th that lady sits back and today is mourning other, uh, the, like uh, the, the, the colleague now, and say, I was going, to, I would have died. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I think you, 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 you bring a very good point, actually. When you, you bring out that unlisted attempted assassination uh, of uh, Honorable Nantaba and uh, her driver uh, and how it has been downplayed uh, to not even be included among the several uh, attempted assassinations. And by the way, these high profile assassinations are only the ones we get to know about. There are so many other people that are being killed uh, mm. that we don't get to know about because they are not as prominent uh, as the ones that come to the news, to the fore uh, in, mm. in, in, in Uganda's media cycle. Uh, mm. But um, going on, on Geno Katumba, let, let, let us uh, try to, 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 to understand, to assess Geno Katumba Omala. Why? the attempted assassination. Uh, has the battle for succession started? Uh, if it has, why would people be interested in eliminating General Katumba Amala? Who is interested in doing so? Well, what are their motives and why would they go? Uh, why would they take this route uh, to assassinate or to try to assassinate General uh, Katumba Amala? Uh, I want to go over there now to be able to go over there. Go over there. If I'm going, we will be able to go over there. Go over there. Many Ugandans are Henry Sali. My name is Henry Sali, and this is the State of the Nation. Uh, today, with me in studio is uh, George Willabo, uh, a political analyst residing here in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, let us go on uh, Geno Katumba. Uh, this is Geno Katumba's uh, chronology. What he has done so far. Uh, not everything, but I'm going to show you his recent, well, one of his most recent uh, recognition from the, 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 the U.S. Uh, Army College. General Amala, thank you for returning home to the United States Army War College and Carlisle Barracks so that we can honor you today. On behalf of the staff and faculty and the United States Army War College Class of 2015, we offer you our deepest congratulations for your designation as the 51st member of our International Hall of Fame. General Omala, General Rapp, please join me on stage for our Hall of Fame induction. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated as Major General Rapp inducts General Omala into the Hall of Fame. The United States Army War College, Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, in recognition of outstanding military achievement, hereby inducts into the International Hall of Fame General Edward Katumba Wamala, Chief of the Defense Force of Uganda, People Defense Forces, a graduate of the United States Army War College Class of 2000, by order of Major General William E. Rapp, dated 18 September 2014.
Your Commandant, Army War College and Mrs. Rob, members of the faculty, my sponsor, Colonel and Mrs. Uh, Comel, my former cosmate, Paul Jessup, or the former syndicate, I mean, uh, seminar uh, instructors, ladies and gentlemen. I feel very, very proud to be back here after all this time, 14 years when I was last here and coming back in a different form uh, to be honored in this Hall of Fame. I feel very, very proud. And uh, I think this is one of the very few momentous moments in my life. And I don't think it will happen again. General Katumba Wamala was inducted uh, as the 51st International Hall of Fame for the United States Army War College. And that was in 2014. Uh, I, is, General Katumba Wamala is a foster general uh, and is perhaps one of the, uh, the only generals in Uganda who has been inducted in, in that college. Uh, so some people are speculating that this could be a battle for succession. Uh, and as you know, on Tuesday, this is what happened. Uh, there was an attempt to assassinate uh, this general. Of course, that assassination ended up taking uh, both his driver and daughter's lives. <laughs> The heavy security deployment at Chisasi Chisotau Road signaled the magnitude of what had happened in the area. This is where a silence shot at the car in which General Edward Katumba Wamala was traveling with his daughter Brenda Nantongo, who was killed alongside the driver Haruna Kayondo. The former works minister survived the attack after a spirited fight by his bodyguard according to eyewitnesses who prefer to remain anonymous. This Chisasi Chisotau Road, according to the residents, during the peak hours in the morning is filled with traffic jam. However, it wasn't the case today when General Edward Katumba Wamala was using this very road. This partly explains why the assailants took their time to fire the many bullets as they did. The bullet holes in General Katumba Wamala's vehicle tell it all. I think the investigators are still piecing up the information and the for me now, I'm going to trace where General Katumba has been taken to the hospital to ensure that he's stabilized so that we don't get in danger. But the information I got from the clinic where the border border riders rushed him. One other bystander was also injured in the attack. General Wamala was rushed to the nearby Malcolm Healthcare to receive first aid before he was taken to Maripal Hospital. At the time of the attack, General Katumba Wamala was reportedly heading to Najanankumbi for the vigil of his mother-in-law. Ali Mivole, NTV. Of course, that's a video uh, adapted from the NTV uh, media uh, house. Uh, but before that video, there's another video by the same uh, media house that had some sort of misleading information. Uh, and this is the video. General Edward Katumba Amala left his home in Najera, reportedly heading for Namasuba in Kampala. Eyewitnesses say he had a UPDF pickup truck ahead of him, which branched off at the temporary junction here. This route leads to the Kampala Northern Bypass. General Katumba's vehicle, with three occupants, continued along Kisota Road, where the assailants laid trap, killing his daughter. That information that uh, General Katumba Wamala had a lead car, we have learned 
We have since learned that uh, it was some sort of misinformation. He had no lead car. He was by himself, and the only guard he had is the one that actually uh, fought, fought off uh, the guys that tried to, to, to kill him. Uh, but uh, something that I haven't uh, highlighted in that is the notion of uh, forensic scientists. Uh, and uh, sure, let me play it fully. General Edward Katumba Amala left his home in Nigeria, reportedly heading for Namasuba in Kampala. Eyewitnesses say he had a UPDF pickup truck ahead of him, which branched off at the temporary junction here. This route leads to the Kampala Northern Bypass. General Katumba's vehicle, with three occupants, continued along Kisota Road, where the assailants laid trap, killing his daughter and driver. According to eyewitnesses, the killers riding two motorbikes then continued and exited Chisota Road using Bukoto Chisasi Road. As investigations begin into the assassination attempt on the life of former works minister General Edward Katumba Amala, the police and all the other investigating agencies will have to pick clues and leads from this area, including using this CCTV camera installed by the government. <laughs> Police have since released some CCTV footage showing the route the criminals used to escape the area. The spokesperson, Fred Nanga, says this is meant to aid in hunting the criminals. So that many members of the public who could be having knowledge surrounding the identity of these asylums uh, to share that information with us. And for better handling of such a case, scene of crime management is key for pieces of evidence. But security expert Fred Egesa says the security organs have still failed to manage these places. So I think this is a situation of briefing and maybe training. We have to train our people to understand that the scene of crime, not until maybe you are there for purposes of rescuing and saving life, a scene of crime is a reserve of the state, yes, but there are experts who should come and examine it. So all the best, what... Uh, and if, what a policeman or an, a, a soldier has to do is to preserve the scene of crime by, by respecting it himself. So if you respect it, even the public will respect it. In the aftermath of such a shooting and the previous ones of this nature, high-ranking officers and at times the president make appearances at crime scenes. Egesa says this is very unprofessional as it may jeopardize the collection of evidence. Now once you rush there and you are not a, an expert, that means the, the person who is junior to you falls out. Yeah, you become the commander of what you don't understand. In this mobile video, many people are seen crowding General Katumba's vehicle even after he was taken away for medical attention. Someone in the crowd warns them against getting close. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to inculcate that in, in, in the minds of, the, of Ugandans to understand that a scene of crime is an exclusive property which has an owner for purposes of picking intelligence, investigation. Of course, you should also be sure that you have an explanation. In case they say, why are you here? But this guy was dying and I had to pull him up and I'm here. So people will get to understand. If you came up and you are mixed up in a scene of crime, uh, if you find the investigators, the analog investigators like some of us, we would even get you charged and then we kind of shift you out later because your DNA comes into the scene. The investigating agencies now have a heavy task ahead of them against the backdrop of many unresolved cases. Walter Moesij, NTV. Could, could this be the reason why most crime scenes haven't uh, produced reports? Is it because uh, people tend to uh, contaminate uh, the crime scene? Also, there are so many other uh, issues to interrogate here. Uh, the border border guy who took uh, uh, Geno Katumba Amala to the hospital, for example, uh, is not the same border border guy who appeared in, a, in one of the okay, the news clip claiming to have taken uh, Geno Katumba Amala. So that, that, that also speaks to the morality and uh, 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 ethics uh, of our people. Uh, if someone could actually come out and lie, make a blatant lie that they are the ones uh, who took uh, the victim to the hospital, when indeed uh, they are not the one, what does that say uh, about us as a people? Uh, the, the notion that 
people were bypassing right after the incident. Uh, cars were just bypassing and couldn't stop to help. Uh, what does that say about us? Uh, the other bystander that, that was shot, uh, uh, the, the, the casualty uh, of the, the, the incident, no one is talking about that guy. Is he okay? Uh, how is he doing? Uh, who is paying for his medical bills? There are so many issues to interrogate uh, in that incident uh, that I hope you can give us some guidance on, Mr. Willowbo. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, you've asked me a specific question, but I will start with the uh, the, the aspect of the border border guys. Those are uh, uh, people in Kampala. Everyone wants to take um, the honor. Credit. So it's a uh, it's a simple fame wannabe, you know. You just want to take the honor of uh, the the you know the hero. So uh, playing the hero, of course, I had to uh, catch up with him. Uh, that one I don't not think it's just petty. Actually, it's very petty to me. Uh, the big picture here is uh, is 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 actually the 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 the, the act of assassination itself. In that, uh, <clears throat> when you when you trail back and look at the the same ministry that yeah, was... and, and that's, sorry, sorry, sorry for 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 for, for this uh, for intercepting your your thought process. But uh, mm -hmm. if you could also speak to the uh, to the notion that uh, NTV in that video misguided us when mm -hmm. they said that uh, Katumba had a lead car when indeed he didn't have a lead car. Uh, what what was the, the their more motive for for saying that? Especially I think one of the. I, I think uh, uh, in that regard, you see, when as a journalist, I, I was I practiced uh, uh, radio journalism for about two years. But what happens is when <clears throat> when you walk into the the field and the story is hot, whoever and whatever that you find that can give you information with regards to what you're looking for is really really very relevant at the time and it is also because of the competition within the news the mainstream media where each one is competing to be the first news breaker now in that way of competing to be the first news breaker and at least reporting what the others are not reporting about gives us to consume each and every information that they give us. We rely so much on them. But they also, you need to look at their side of the story also. They also rely on the people that claim to be, a, to be eyewitnesses. Now, what happens is uh, when a journalist rushed to the scene and is told that, okay, are you, were you there? Were, were you there? I was there. I saw, I saw this A, B, C, D. So that is what he or she is going to take us the, 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 the testimony of the eyewitness and you hear the reporter actually quoting from the eyewitness eh? the eyewitness so maybe the eyewitness saw another some random uh, army pickup passing by um, prior to uh, Katumba's coming or maybe you know assumptions uh, you know those all that is uh, really has to be factored in to make sense out of it and uh, I don't really find it very Yes, it's a, it was a misinformation, but I see the misinformation from the the eyewitnesses. Because if you go back again, you you hear the eyewitnesses said that the motorcycles were big, uh, they were BMW, like you get all sorts of information. So all those information, when you look at again the camera, the footage, the footage, it is shows uh, they are not as big as we would imagine. The eyewitnesses say. And there are quite a number of uh, facts that that uh, the, fa the, the the informations were were a little bit shaky at the time, but at least I know and I believe with the time uh, most of them will take shape. Right. Mm. And uh, Mr. Katumba had this is what he had to say after he left the hospital. It's difficult. I, I can't tell what their motive was, but all in all, of course, we lost two innocent lives. My daughter, very innocent girl, 34 years, and my driver, these are innocent citizens who are lost in that gruesome murder. Uh, but I hope that one day, one time, these people will be found. I want to give thanks to, first of all, as I said, the medical team here, MedPlan, for 
how they received me and how they have handled me all the time. I give thanks to the um, Malcolm X team, which stabilized me uh, from the scene of, of crime. And I also want to thank the Boda Boda boy, the guy who vol volunteered to, t to take me to the hospital. Because he, he, he even reached a level of saying, if you don't jump on it, I'll force you to get on the border. So I want, I want to thank him. So thank you very much, people. Thank you. And I want to thank all. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, if you look at uh, from the first thing that he's talking about the motive, uh, you can't clearly know the motive of the assailants. Uh, but looking at uh, the trend, take from uh, from the trend of uh, Aronda Nyakairima, for example. Right. Uh, yes, his uh, his death. There are lots of. Of course, uh, the po food poisoning and all these other things is a debate for another day, but it points out that there is something in that ministry that, that is of interest to some people, elements in the government. Because if you look at Arunda Nyakarima was also brought in from the army, hmm? from the army into the ministry of uh, trans works and transport. Now, the line of including uh, Natas, uh, what Nyakalima was in internal affairs, I think. Right? I mean, in, interna yes, internal affairs, but it is within the same circles, context, of, yes, uh, yes, 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 in the same context, whereby these army officers are brought in uh, under under the, 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 the suspicions of certain in dealings and in inside works. Now, when they are, because the army officers are trained to be very, very ridiculous. Yeah. Yes, they are. They will serve to the best of their commitment, and uh, you know they are very allegiant to the system. So when when such a person starts making known so many uh, loopholes and hole closing them at the same time, because for them they are meant to discover. Uh, 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 they, 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 they find out a loophole, they close it. They are trained like that. They identify, execute. They identify and execute the mission in terms of uh, uh, service. Yes. Now, the service that uh, th there is no doubt, service of uh, uh, Wamala has been clean since from when he was uh, uh, IGP yeah. and all these other times that he has been a minister of defense in, in defense and in the security circles. Now, problem comes when you step on certain toes within some ministries and some uh, within the inside the uh, system itself. Because we believe it or not, no one can attempt to assassinate without a cause, without a reason. There are so many things, including the likes of, because these are just talks of the nation that has it uh, about the bickering at the at the airline, for for example, the, the where what he has done a commendable job. In fact, Museveni mentioned it in his State of the Nation address, yeah. where he was talking about the 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 the, 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 the disagreements and all the things that the losses that they have caused the Uganda Airlines as its infantry level, you'll find that Katuma Omala played a very, very pivotal role in that process of uh, harnessing and harmonizing situations in that, in that, uh, in that parastato. Now, remember that is a business, a government business. Right. And it, it creates a very powerful force of interests, different interests. And for me, uh, I would believe that there is a lot of digging that uh, the government has to do. And uh, I strongly think that uh, uh, Museveni this time around, when you, when you read between the lines of his speech, he is uh, he's actually mentioning the people that the asylums, uh, people, these people as pigs. But you see, yes. a pig, uh, there is a lot of in between the, in between the lines this is pigs. A metaphor. What yes, does that the, metaphor mean? Yes, there is there is some known uh, there is some perception that he knows them. There is some perceptions that he suspects them. He suspects the few. He suspect. He, 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 in fact, he talks. In fact, if you listen this time round 
to the presidential uh, state of the nation address, you will see a different, a different kind of Museveni around along the way of his regimes. You will see a little bit of uh, the under the tones are a little bit different in terms of uh, uh, actions, actionary words that he was using. Because if you look at what he's commanding and saying, he's simply saying these pigs. But you cannot say pigs when you don't want when you don't know them. And if they are pigs, who are these pigs? Yeah. And if the pigs are unknown, why don't we produce them? Apprehend them, yes. Yes. Yeah. And it also brings back the question of what does Museveni fear in the pigs? Yes. Or so what is what do the pigs, these pigs, what do they have and what do they hold in this government that they are untouchable? They are not able to be uh, apprehended. You get the point. Now, when you consider the, 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 the entire assassination attempt and put it into context of what he has been saying all this all, all along, it means that still, even in the army, there are, the, the weevils have shifted from the police to the army. Reason, for this reason only. If, if I said this earlier, actually, that yeah. for someone to attempt to assassinate a, a foster general as in the <laughs> names of Katumba Wamala, right. that person must be also at least, two, yeah. at least one star or two stars. Now, meaning that, uh, I'm not making any insinuations here, but this is a reflection that there's the, 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 the capacity for somebody to attempt to kill uh, the resistance that that person would expect would be uh, would be expected. So the fear that of attacking such a person cannot be felt cannot just be done by these local petty criminals. These are very highly trained people in assassinations. Yes, in assassination in assassinations in 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 in, 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 in hardcore criminality. Now, with that said. It does not actually nullify the notion that this 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 inside system uh, interests right. what the, the, the Tamale Mirundi call the mafias that run the systems they run the systems inside. Actually, there is no doubt that you can rule them out. So. It is so happened that our system is so so weakened to the to the extent that even the people that are supposed to protect and actually serve the the population are part of the the clicking and the crime and the criminals they collude. In fact, Museveni mentioned this in his state of the nation address, right. where the, the the criminals collude with the security and the, the the people in the ministry, the line ministries. When he was talking about the corruption in the Ministry of Finance, now when Museveni, you hear him now mentioning the weaknesses that are inside the system of, of the police, he yeah. has to also put point the the gun also at the army at the same time because look at these people have a completed very fully functional, very strong army in East Africa, East and Central Africa. Yeah. How comes they do not have the intelligence to 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 at least suspect that there is a there is an intelligence report that shows that the life of a, uh, a general is in danger? Right. Why? Question yeah. number two. Question number two. When you listen to Museven, you you hear him like for example i'm taking all this from the public uh, re, um, speech that he made yeah. where he's questioning why does the police and the people in the field use uh, cell phones to communicate whereby a, a crime is being carried out on and you are calling a dpc on a cell phone whatever the dpc says cannot be traced from the public domain of the police or in the, the systems of the police, but it's between the, the two of you. If at all you are colluding to commit a crime, what happens? Okay. Now, yeah. the people manning the intelligence, are they really doing the right job? Are they doing their, their work? 
Now, there are people, of course, in the government, and all governments across the world, it's not only Uganda, where uh, people establish themselves with political eliminations of their opponents, uh, uh, mere kind of patterns of economic gain, you know, uh, to escalate situations where there are also notions that uh, in the time of um, the previous IGP, there were escalations of crime and cri criminality right. to right. increase the budgets, yeah. to increase the budget line, the budgets the of, the, budget. of the, yeah. yes. Now, those are also political, I mean, the, 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 the economic gains of the individuals and right. also the acts of terrorism and all these other aspects. But what beats every person's understanding is that Uganda was able to defeat so many forces in terms of criminality. Eh? Uganda right. was, is the only country that uh, at least uh, was uh, hit by Al-Shabaab and they combed to the latter, to the extent that Al-Shabaab has never come back to threaten it. Well, but that's the, also the, the, the same case uh, mm. that might have led to Justice Kagezi's death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So those are those are those are now inside out. But if you look at the intelligence system and how it operates and how they if they are to be committed into one some course. Some people are actually questioning if that was Al Shabab the, 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 that uh, uh, operated organized that the, the, that terrorism in Lugogo was that oh, yeah. Al Shabab or was it an inside job? Uh, to that latter, actually, I cannot say that. Um, it was not Al Shabab. It was Al Shabab because the public information that they provide the, the Ugandans is, in fact, they can they shape what the, the discussions and conversations uh, uh, we have. Now, when we are looking at the the factors in terms of uh, the effectiveness of the intelligence, whether they were perpetrated by the insiders within the police or by the Al Shabab. The, 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 the aspect and the agency that they, they took to make it uh, to make it work to their favor actually is, a, is is extremely sophisticated than the system in place right because look at how they they choreograph the whole if it is to be believed that it was an inside job how yeah. they choreograph and uh, take out lives and make those grieving families to date believe that their, the lives of their loved ones were taken by Al-Shabaab, and then uh, making us believe that the Al-Shabaab have, uh, of course, uh, admitted that it was their attack, and uh, making every turning point of, 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 of Kampala to become a checkpoint, every bus to be checked, and uh, making sure that they right. man all right. the operatives and uh, beefing up security and all this. Now, those are robust investments by government. I will not rule it out because there is an economic gain somewhere, somehow. Right. But what... Uh, what and as, uh, as uh, Winston Churchill once said, never take any crisis uh, for granted, I believe. Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah never In take fact, yeah. Uh, Churchill is very interesting with the, his own words because, because he even described the certain governments as man-eaters. So... If you do not take me out, I take you out. Right. You get it? the kind of survival that uh, that the government yes, can yeah. go through sometimes. So, yeah. uh, the people in power use their power to sub uh, to actually subdue and make the the citizens believe what they they don't even they don't even have to believe because yeah. they have all the capacity to make us to make us believe what they are. But now it has become naked to right. the extent that even my grandmother in, in, in wherever Nakapiripirit can yeah. be able to question how did a major general how someone was to try to kill a major general? It does not, it, it's not hard of. Because for you, to, for you to try that, it's a, it's a mission impossible. It's, it's, an, it's in fact it's, it's a self, it's, it, you're going for suicide mission. So meaning that the Ugandan government must be able to clearly define uh, the efficiency of our security systems other than making, uh, making the, 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 the person of the president 
looked like uh, he's making a comedy in on national television trying to uh, trying to uh, assert that pigs the pigs killed they are the ones killing people and yet these pigs have never been produced even a tail of a pig has never been brought as a as evidence that we at least we, we almost grabbed the pig but we captured the tail <laughs> <That's a idea. laughs> yes at least the parade parade uh, a person that looks like a pig uh, right. that we can believe that okay now we have at got one have pig. Uh-huh. we have got uh, at least uh, evidence that the we cornered the pig but it escaped but so far we have got the hooves yes. now the next time we are getting the real pig then yes. now when you get one pig at least assure that, us that okay we have got the pig now, now we what? know his DNA, we are exactly. going to find out the, uh, the rest of uh -huh. the So this one pig is going to tell us who they have been eating around with the chaff. Okay, so if that is not done, the hearts of Ugandans are bitter. The people grieving are extremely angry. There are people, some, some deaths that we have not talked about that are really, really very plain to the extent that the president admitted that my people shot him. Zebra. If you look at the, the zebra's death. Yes. Eh? Where this head of state is admitting. But what happened to those that shot? Zebra, yes. Uh -huh. And if they shot him, what were they looking for? Why did they kill him? Yeah. Here, why did they kill him? And what were they looking for there? And again, you go back and hear that, okay, uh, there is inside rumor that Zebra actually had a preparation meeting to meet the president. So what information was he taking or what discussion was going to make the agenda of, of that meeting? And the whole thing of uh, uh, trailing him and making him die in such an appalling grief, a very, very painful death. Yeah, gruesome death, yes. Very gruesome. Yeah. In front of you, uh, the family, like the people, the Ugandans, the, the, the ladies, the women that were killed in Nansana, in Tevi, and all these other places. Yes. Yes. You know, who, yes, yes. Who, who, who really, who was behind them? Yeah. These these are not these are not scattered. Uh, just uh, maybe you can say maybe they are serial killers and murderers. Yes, they made us look made it look like that, but they were very very well orchestrated. They were very well right. organized. Yeah. If if these were just uh, you know random crim criminalities, they wouldn't be so so consistent to that level. And even if they were to be consistent. They wouldn't be as so hard a puzzle to crack as as someone because when I was reading that report about the twenty the, the women that you hear about the lady that was uh, abducted and the guys had over sixteen SIM cards, right? And yeah. and and they had all the steps that the families were making with the communications with police with security operatives and every level of uh, of security. Who does that? Yeah. If you are, if, if 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 those people are not inside, who does that? You cannot be a, a, an outside a random criminal, and you have that capacity to to infiltrate the intelligence to that level. So, it goes back to the to the to the to the to the need yeah. that 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 Mus, that Museveni, ha, uh, in fact, Museveni needs a lot of uh, uh, redemptions in terms of making people, the Ugandan people, trust the system because the system is completely untrustable in terms of uh, people being murdered, but there is no report or follow-up or questions or any follow-up towards uh, the culprits that may be arrested as suspects or even when arrested, they are not even the real suspects. But there are right. people who are sitting in very many Uganda uh, people's blood in Uganda. There are very many inside people in the system that are sitting in so many innocent blood. And we have not talked about those that are actually uh, just murdered for wrangles of land, for issues of, uh, with the big wigs, with the big shots in the government. People Even the political death, 
even the political days because exactly when you think about for example uh, the death of uh, Rita Nabu Kenya mm -hmm. who is alleged to have been killed by the police but uh, for some reason uh, the video was never produced apparently the video wasn't on uh, uh, and uh, recently people uh, during the, the Katumba's saga people have speculated that uh, the, the policemen who were manning uh, the, the, the video center were arrested. Uh, mm. So I don't know how true that is. Uh, these are speculations I have had around. Uh, uh, but if they were indeed uh, arrested, why were they arrested? Uh, and as we wrap up, I, I would like to ask you this final question. Do you think this is a, a succession battle? Uh, to be honest with you, based on my opinion, uh, an understanding of Museveni, Museveniism. Uh, <clears throat> I do not think uh, Katumba has, has any ambitions, uh, political ambitions to that level. Uh, the succession battle is, is fierce and uh, more so uh, politics of Uganda, whether we like it or not, whether we want to talk about it or not, is rooted in two main three categories. It is rooted in the tribal tribal uh, zone, tribal zoning, and then it is rooted into religion. Okay, and then also it is rooted into the the the, the, the financial part of it. The, the 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 financially capable. Now, when you look at the the the, the, the zoning, the, the 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 tribal zoning of Uganda right now. Uh, I would not see Katumba as um, a big as a big uh, contender for the succession um, uh, kind of talks. However, I can only suspect that uh, he has he has a, a very serious economic loss or uh, personal um, toes that he has stepped onto that has caused some some daring moves towards him and also remember that Museveni has has a lot of information about the people around him and because of that it mean it, it also means that a person of Katumba has drawn himself towards Museveni so close to the extent that there must be something that is shaping discussions with between uh, Museveni and Katumba that is, uh, is, 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 is either suspected to release a very serious uh, venom of truth, a venom of truth either within, within the min line ministry, within, uh, because min the Ministry of Works and the Transport is extremely big and it cuts across so many uh, levels, including the army itself, because it goes into the army. Because if you look at the procurements that, that, that go through the Ministry of Works, Hmm? The biggest budget over the years has always been into into that ministry. Yeah. Look at it in the in the economic sense, where the ministry that is called the Ministry of uh, Works and Transport takes the the largest chunk of the the, the, the government budget. Right. Now that is that that signals to you that it it gets it 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 has so many uh, highness. Eh? <laughs> high high interest. <laughs> yes, there's so many Ainas that are looking at that. Right, look at, right. Look at the, up this conversation. Yes. So uh, I would not think that he is. Uh, it is as a result of any political ambition to the level of uh, um, uh, uh, succession. No. Okay. Level of succession is it? We don't know. Uh, for everyone who has been watching us from uh, the beginning, we always expect you to uh, at least send some of your uh, comments uh, and uh, ideas to us. You have the comment section. None of you has commented. Many of you have been uh, watching here. Uh, we always want to hear some insights from you. This is the state of the nation. Ebifa Mugwanga. My name is Henry Sally. Uh, we are very... Uh, appreciative of your support, uh, but we are in a crisis. Uganda is in a crisis. 
as Winston Churchill once said, never take any crisis to waste. We hope the government of Uganda will not take this crisis to waste, and we hope they are going to work diligently to produce the report that people are eagerly waiting for. We wish uh, General Katumba Wamala quick, a quick recovery, uh, and we send our condolences to him and his family, uh, and to the family of Haruna uh, Kayondo, and to all the families of the people uh, that have experienced death in the last uh, couple of months, especially those that have experienced political deaths. Uh, we encourage the government to release all political prisoners and to ensure that there is peace and security in the country. My name is Henry Sully, and this is the state of the nation. Thank you so much.